So before we begin, we really wanted to figure out, um, as a business, um, what factors we were going to kind of dig deep into and find within the data set that was given to us. And naturally, as any business, your ultimate goal is to make profit. And so the first thing that we did decide to look at is within the products that our company sells, we wanted to look at which items were selling and how much they were selling. And so we... So then we showed it through the graph and we used um, a red and green scale so it shows um, the more you sell, the greener it gets and then the less that it's selling, um, it's better. And then um, naturally we wanted to also see if we were gaining profit from the items that we were selling. So we also created a profit chart. And then also here we uh, filtered by red and green again so the more the profit that it was gaining the greener it gets, and then the less profit or negative profit, it will turn red. And so to compare the two, we put the two side by side, just so it's an easier visualization, because as you can see, a lot of the products do sell well, but when you actually compare it to the profit that it makes, some of the items that tend to sell well aren't making any profit. Um, for example, the office machines, it's actually the one product that sells the most, but it's losing the most amount of profit. And so to figure out why um, this was happening, we created some trend lines that trend is going to explain. So from this trend line, we wanted to research a little more or be a little deeper on you know, you know, those outliers. Um, in this case, we found five spikes on the outlier. In this case, where the first one, if you can see this area around the third day, there was a spike in sales, but there was a decrease in Profits. The second one around the tenth mark, a tenth day, where the same thing happened, and another one on the seventeenth day, and on the twentieth, was actually that one was actually an expected outcome where uh, sales increased, but and profits also increased. Uh, and then there was a smaller spike near the twenty seventh area where once again the dip and sales were up in that time. So uh, we'll go to the next slide. To kind of get a better understanding, we wanted to take a, a better look at profit by state. And so we um, kind of took the map of the state and then we wanted to see which states were creating profit and which states were losing profit. So as you can see, California makes the most amount of profit. And then um, North Carolina, it was losing the most amount of profit. We wanted to figure out what could be a factor, so we kind of we layered the map with population to see if there was a correlation between um, how many people live in the area and how much profit the area makes. And so what we found was that California and the places that are a little bit more heavily populated tended to have better profit, and the places that had a lesser population seemed to not have as strong of a profit. So a strategy we uh, developed. Uh, from, from this data just up to here would be uh, in terms of redistribution. We can you know, use the areas that are kind of like populated that need the base ball marking to be doing really well there. Also decreasing uh, areas that are like, decreasing awareness in areas that are doing so well, such as Montana up there, as well as the Midwest region, so going on. And so we also wanted to see if there are any other factors that played into why some items sell well but don't um, generate a lot of profit. So what we um, decided to look into was discounts, the amount of discounts that a certain product receives and how that correlates to profit. And so what we found was four um, states in this case where we want to compare. I uh, started with California where there's a lot of discounts going on and at the same time it's expected, as we said earlier, where it is profitable. So we look at Florida, and you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of discounts as well, um, but in this case there's only like, there's like almost none, no profit at all. Uh, then we look at Georgia where they have almost no discounts, but they have a pretty decent amount of profits. And finally Montana where they didn't discount at all, and they lost the most profits. Um, so moving on. So from this we want to kind of like replicate or like use Georgia as a uh, in point in this case where 
we want to analyze deeper into the products, which we found more products uh, as outliers, paper, heads and art supplies, storage, and organization tool, um, computer, and et cetera, where all these basically had a lot of discount, um, but they all lost money. Um, so we could, what we concluded was um, from this information, this data that we have, we shouldn't be taking away anything, any other products taking away any like uh, the entire Walmart. In this case, we would just reduce um, discounts in these uh, products. We don't want to get rid of the entire thing because we still want to maintain awareness. Um, and at the same time, we want to reduce the supply because obviously there's no demand for these products in these regions. And then we would repeat this strategy over uh, the other outlier uh, states. And that is our presentation. Good flow as well for the analysis. Um, even from the flow point of view, it was very good, um, very articulate in the presentation as well. Did you guys run into any any specific questions that you were not able to answer while doing the analysis, or you think you have answered all your questions on the analysis? I think um, if we had a couple more days to look through it, there were certain questions that we had that we wanted to take a deeper look into, but just. Because Definitely, we wanted to kind of dig deeper into why um, certain discounts affected certain products, and then which part of those would specifically be so we could kind of target that area a little bit more. <coughs> but we didn't have a chance to do that. Okay, okay. And then, even from the previous team, I, I actually was uh, meant to ask the question, I will ask your team as well. Uh, while analyzing did you find any reason to see that some data is missing or additional data could actually help better? Like any missing data you think in the, in the data set? We had a few missing uh, data in um, what was it, the Eastern region. And um, that could have actually helped us a lot because we would have had like, a deeper analysis on like, why, or like more spikes in this case. Um, which we were only, only able to find four outliers. We could have found more. The more we find, the more we can like, you know, dive uh, for the answer in this case, which we couldn't really dive into because either the lack of information or uh, you know, lack of time. Okay, okay. And yeah, I think that that could be also very beneficial to include in the presentation. Any assumptions? Any anything that is missing right now that could affect the analysis itself? Uh, any additional data that could actually provide more insights into the whole analysis? Could, uh, it it will always be a good idea to include one one slide and one story there explains the process itself. So yeah, overall it's very good. Uh, I really like the flow flow as well while I'm analyzing it. Very good. Good job.